Hello everyone and welcome to the Gilman School. We are here between the Gilman Greyhounds and the St. Paul's Crusaders for Greyhound TV's season premiere for Gilman Varsity Basketball. Both teams coming in a few games into their season after Gilman lost their first game to Georgetown Prep. Taylor, Gilman's got a great team this year. They're very deep. Uh, what are we looking for? Yeah, Taylor West here. Um, so. What I'm really looking for is to see if these guards can really convert the long ball. Last year, the long, from what I saw, you know, they struggled a little bit shooting the three. But I think that this team, with the depth that it has, is going to be able to shoot the long ball a lot better this year. And, you know, down low, Roman Hines, a beast. 6'9", uh, I think he may be 6'10 now, but he, he is just, like last year, he was just still playing a couple games in a couple minutes. But this year, he's going to get a lot more minutes at starting center. Definitely. How did that Georgetown prep game go a few days ago, Taylor? Well, I mean, shooting was off and the defense was not very well executed, as Coach Bart said. So I, th I think Gilman's really looking to turn around from that, and we all know that they can. So I think it's really these early season tournaments are really to vet, revamp or vamp them up for the incoming uh, MIA season. So I'm excited to see how they play, how they can come back from their loss the other day. Speaking of that, how do you think they're going to perform today, Taylor? You know, I, I don't really know much about the St. Paul's team. I think they're going to play well, though. I think coming off losses, Gilman, Gilman is traditionally well. Um, I think they're, they're, St. Paul's is going to try to slow us down, but Gilman has to play their game. They've got a speed up and down the court. Great transition team. So I'm, I'm, really, I'm really just excited to see these two teams play. And uh, last there, what did what Mr. Bart say today? What is he looking for in Gilman's uh, game against St. Paul's? Um, I mean... They're they're athletic. They have they play a slower tempo. They play a slower game. As I said earlier, they're going to try to slow her down. And you know it's going to be a new style this year um, because they have a new coach who is very well known for being a great coach in the basketball community. But I mean we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. Great, Taylor. As we send it down to the court, we have Coach William Bartz, assisted by Eddie Green and Tony Jordan for Gilman. On the other side, we have freshman coach as it is his first year, Phil Pahn, uh, assisted by his brother and the other assistant coach, Corey H Hudson. As we get ready for tip here, John, uh, who do you think is, Gil is Gilman's key player in this game? You know, I think Jalen Rucker is really a great player. I mean, yeah. He's a senior. He's an Army commit. Great height. Uh, he can get the ball down the court, score easily. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he's really going to be the leader of this team tonight. We go down to the tip-off. St. Paul's wins it. Early miss by St. Paul's. That was number five, Ziggy Reed. Really quick start for St. Paul's there. I was a little surprised, you know, reading that they had a slower tempo team. That was coming off fast there. Leo Kelly to inbound it now. Gets it up the court to Amir Thomas. St. Paul's working around, trying to get inside. Shoot and fouled, and that will go in for Ziggy Reed. As the foul will be called off, and Malik Missouri inbounds it. Gilman seems in no rush here early in the game, working around, looking for the best option. Jalen Rucker brings it inside. He shoots. And a slight miss as St. Paul's will rebound. Take it up. That's Gilman had, Thomas again. Yeah, Gilman had an ideal matchup there lo down low. They had Roman Hines versus number one, uh, sorry about that, Amir Thomas, and who's 5'10", 5'10", freshman. So I think Gilman really got to get the ball down to Roman when he has those matchups. And number four, Anthony Smaldor for St. Paul's nearly misses. And Gilman will get the ball back. Jalen Rucker walking it down now as he passes up to Missouri. Looking to set up a play. Passes inside. And Foster misses. Passes out to Rucker. Goes inside, out to Missouri. Three-point attempt, and he misses it. We saw St. Paul's in the 2-3 defense here. So what that means is they're, that, 
that's the real indicator that they're going to try to slow Gilman a lot down because not playing man, it's a huge key. Rucker to Drew. Or to Foster. He comes in. First points of the game for either team. Yeah, great drive of it and I mean, great job in transition for Gilman. They are getting the ball down to Jordan Foster and allowing him to get a quick layup. Press defense by Gilman as St. Paul's works it around inside. And a good shot by Ziggy Reed as St. Paul's gets their first points of the game. Yeah, not much you can do there for Malik Missouri. He had quality defense on him, just kind of put it up and went in. Inside to Hines, and he gets Gilman the lead again. There's that matchup Gilman should be looking for, Ro Roman Hines versus Samir Thomas down low. I don't know what St. Paul's is thinking putting <laughs> those two guys I mean, against each other. I mean, it's about a foot difference. <laughs> Roman's probably Gilman's tallest player. and I mean, Amir Thomas, he's a pretty short guy. Yeah. St. Paul's gets two more there. As Rucker takes it down, over to Missouri in the far corner. Rucker thinks about it, dribbles inside, takes a shot, and he gets it off the glass. As it looks like Gilman will call timeout early in this one. They lead 6-4. We'll be back. Welcome back here to Gilman. Greyhounds leading 6-4 in this one. St. Paul's trying to work it inside. Is it stolen by Rucker? He passes up to Chase Drew, and he comes up and just misses the layup. Over back to St. Paul's now. That was Ziggy Reed trying to get the inside shot. I think on that last possession there, um, Chase Drew really, he, he, I think he was going for the dunk initially, but then decided to go for the layup. Smarter move, but just kind of got tripped up in that transition. Definitely. Always a little nerve-wracking when you're opening your first game of the season at home, but I'm sure he'll get right back at it. Yeah, this is his first, this is his first game in a couple of years at Gilman. I mean, he redshirted last year, so I mean, we'll, see. we'll see how he does. I'm excited to see him play. And Reed gets the first three point, or pardon me, free throw. Rucker taking it up now. Defense by Miles Moore. Pass over to Drew, and Drew misses another one. Rebounded by Gilman. Missouri one to the three-pointer. Took it out. Drew going inside. And he gets the layup. Great play by Chase Drew there. I mean, great find by Malik Missouri after initially losing the ball, but great recovery to allow him to go under the basket and score. <coughs> St. Paul's with it up top. Leo Kelly drives inside. Roman Hines gets the rebound. Pass over to Drew as he will take it up the court. Missouri trying to get inside. Passes out. Pass a little wide of Rucker, but he will retain the possession. He gets inside, and he's just off. St. Paul's bringing it up now. Fast break. Miles Moore, and he gets the layup. Off the glass. Jordan Foster thinking now, he passes over to Rucker. Rucker inside to Roman Hines. And Roman is just off as that goes off the rim. And St. Paul's will get it back as Ziggy Reed brings it down the court. Deed up by Malik Missouri. Picked by Troy Bartholomew. And Ziggy Reed will miss it, but Troy will get the ball back for St. Paul's. 
shoots and he is fouled. No, Gillen will get the ball back. My mistake. Yeah, I mean, number five, Reed for the St. Paul's guard has been all over the court. The 6'5 senior has been, I think, scored. Um, I'm not sure, but he, he has been a huge offensive presence for St. Paul's so far. Both teams team, seem to be playing at a very slow tempo tonight. No rush to get points. Pretty low scoring so far, I'd say, as it is only 8-8. Eight to eight. Rucker in side. Not quite sure what happened. Any idea, Taylor? No, I'm not sure there. I think it may have just been a little reach and foul. Um, but what I'm excited to see here is number 15, uh, Christian Will Winborn, is in for the first time as a Gilman Greyhound in the arena as he takes his first three and just barely misses him. Off. That's always exciting to see some freshman blood start early in the season. Yeah. And Gilman will get the ball as it looks like it was an offensive penalty on St. Paul's. Seems like St. Paul's is struggling with travels. I think that's three travels for them so far. I mean, that's kind of fundamental basketball. We'll see if they, I'm sure they get over it. Inside to Foster, and he's just off. He'll get the ball back, however. Gets it to Rucker. And it looks like that's a travel on Rucker. All right, it looks like St. Paul's is going to call a timeout tonight. And we'll be back in a bit on Greyhound TV. St. Paul's 0% the field. Are you just keeping track of Gilman stats? Welcome back as St. Paul's is trying to get it up the court as Gilman is playing some press defense. And Jalen Rucker steals it. He goes to the hoop and wow. makes the layup. That's impressive there by Jalen Rucker. Rising over Ziggy Reed, the 6'5 senior, and laying it up, stealing the ball and getting it in. Looks like the ball went out of bounds off Gilman. So St. Paul's will retain possession. We see number 22, Matt Cooper, sub in here. Uh, so, number, uh, he's a sophomore. Uh, got, he was kind of mixed between JV and varsity last year, but now I think this year he's becoming a more senior role in this varsity squad definitely Taylor he did have a great presence however last year in the silent night silent game. night yeah he did hit a he hit a big three um, in that game unfortunately Gilman came up a little bit short by some questionable referee calls but great that's basketball last year. game yeah it was now. it was a great game pass a little high St. Paul's able to keep it down hard D and they're gonna call Rayon Lane on the foul there yeah, that's tough for Ryan. I, I know he was he was really looking for that streak down the court. He, he had an easy two in his hands, but you know, it was a tough one there. Leo Kelly again to inbound it. He looks to the side. He goes to Troy Bartholomew. Barthol and the ball goes out on the bounce pass, and Gilman will get the ball back as they look to add to their lead. Jalen Rucker and Rayon Lane passing back. Rucker inside, he passes to Winborn. Inside the lane, he passes out to Cooper for three, and he wow. gets it. Great shot by Matt Cooper there, and great job by Rayon Lane, drawing all the defenders inside to kick it outside to Matt Cooper. Great movement by Gilman early in this game. Gilman gets a steal. And Winborn is fouled on the layup. So he will go to the line now. Yeah, he hit hard on the ground there. I was a little worried for a second. He looked like he had something wrong with his arm. Great perseverance. Shakes it off, and he 
will attempt his free throws now. Makes the first ones. First point, hopefully, of many of his going career at the arena. Although he does look a little shaken up after that. After he hit the floor hard, he's kind of shaking his arm. And he makes the second, two for two. St. Paul's trying to inbound it. They find Anthony Smaldor, but he will be fouled. Looks like a push by Gilman. Number perhaps. four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number four, senior guard Matt Smith, the three-point specialist, has checked in. Um, you know, last year he was, uh, it was the three strictly for him, and I think this year it's going to be pretty much the same thing. I mean, he has probably the best three-point shot on this team. Ziggy inside, he finds Bartholomew, and he'll be fouled as his shot just misses, bounces off the rim. Bartholomew hits the back of the rim as it just still goes to the side. And he misses both of them. Matt Cooper goes to Smith. Almost tipped out, however, Gilman gets it back. Laying over to Smith. Inside, Missouri not able to handle it. As St. Paul's goes up, going for a fast break. Pass back, bad pass, but and Lane is able to get it as he goes up. And the layup is good. That's where Rayon really strives on 1v1 matchups where he can take advantage of his handles. And Gilming has it back now. Missouri trying to go inside, but he gives it to Lane. And he just misses as Ziggy Reed tries to get it up the court. Gilman's came out after the last time out with a much more aggressive defense. Had a couple steals, and we'll see how they play. Gilman's on a 9-0 run right yeah. now. Taylor, what have, we, what have we been seeing tonight by the Greyhounds in terms of statistics so far? Well... It looks like here that, I mean, they're shooting above 50% from the field. That's always a good thing. 100% um, from the free throw line, which is something that the Hounds struggled with last year, especially their senior class. Um, so I'd be looking, I mean, the foul, the foul, problem, foul line trouble last year was really tough for the Hounds. But hopefully, I mean, it's looking like they can come back this year and have a great year from the line. Exactly. So given five for nine on field goals, 56%. Our statistics are brought to you. Thank you to Ryan Joyce, who's keeping us up to date tonight. And St. Paul's gets its first to end Gilman's streak. And he misses the second, as St. Paul's has been a little unsuccessful tonight in terms of free throws. Smith the three. Oh. Almost gets the buzzer beater, but yeah. that will go in and out of the net. Good half defensively for the Hounds. I mean, good quarter, sorry. Only giving up nine points, that's, that's a large improvement for them. You almost doing a great job defensively, Taylor. I mean, after that 76 points uh, given up against Georgetown Prep, this is a great turnaround. Yep. All right, well, we will be back momentarily on Greyhound TV.
Welcome back to the Gilman Arena. Gilman has a 17-9 advantage at the start of the second quarter. They're passing around. Field goal shot and missed. I think we forgot to mention, so the winner of this game in the Bristow tournament goes on to play the West Nottingham Rams tomorrow at, I think, 6 p.m. So, I mean, West Nottingham had a huge win over Concordia Prep earlier, winning by, I think, like 60 points. Nearly missed the 100 mark. Yes. And St. Paul's loses possession as Gilman looks to add to their lead. Ty Wilson bringing it up. Over to Rucker. Takes the three from deep, and he's perfect. Great shot there. Yeah, he, had a, he had a man right on him, but still drained it. Really impressive out of Jalen Rucker. Definitely, Taylor. St. Paul's working it around. Inside to Bartholomew. So he takes the field goal, and he will be off. It looks like they're going to call... A foul. <laughs> Ziggy Reed goes to the line once more. He's been all right tonight from the line. He's now four or five. Hit four or five. And he misses another. Chase Drew passed up to Rucker, but he was not ready for it. And as that goes out of bounds, St. Paul's will get the ball back. Anthony Smaldor up against Kai Wilson, trying to get across the midcourt line. He dribbles around, nearly loses it. He gives it to the Kelly. St. Paul's good ball movement right now. Inside to Bartholomew. He passes out, but that will go out of bounds. And Gilman will get the ball back after that turnover. Great double team there by Jordan Foster, for forcing him to pass the ball that he definitely did not want to, but... Really great pressure to force him to pass it out of bounds. Absolutely. That was a great play by Gilman. Rucker in the close corner. Gilman. My, my bad. Yeah, that wasn't Jordan Foster. That was Ky senior Kai Wilson. My bad on that one. Over to Drew in the corner for a three. And he's just off. But Rucker will get the ball back, and Gilman will have a fresh shot clock. However, looks like some good defense by Leo Kelly forced Rucker to step on the line as it will go the other way. The big man, number 55, Zach Franks, has checked in. Senior, 6'6", uh, star football player. So I'm – oh, well, John, you want to call this? Oh, uh, we'll walk here. But he, his, I think what Gillen's really looking to get him is in the post because he can body anybody down there and try to get a nice hook shot up and in. Definitely the big man down there, Taylor. He is, we have his height right here, six foot six. I can't even break six foot personally. <laughs> and Franks gets it. However, his shot is not able to go in. Up to small door, he takes it out. Passes inside to Ziggy Reed, and he gets the two points. Ziggy Reed all over the place. I think he scored about half of St. Paul's points so far. Definitely, Taylor. He's incredible tonight. Yeah. Those are his six. That's his sixth point. So, yes, that's half of St. Paul's. This Gilman's up 20-12 to 12 right now. Rucker dribbling it around. Tries to pass. He gets it back. As it looks like he almost lost it. Foster out to Franks as he goes back to Foster. Goes inside for the layup, but he is fouled. So he will go to the line. Well, great. I mean, great play there by Jordan Foster, showing his dribbling skills to get through that whole St. Paul's defense, get up to the rim, get the foul, go to the line for two.
and he makes the first. Taylor, what have you been seeing out of St. Paul's? A little lack of something that's not giving them the opportunity to be right there with Gilman as they trail by eight points now. Well, so, ten. so far what I see is like a lack of depth. It's pretty much been the Ziggy Reeds show so far. And he's been basically all, all over the place. Um, but if, if St. Paul's can get their other players involved scoring points, I mean, I Quickly, think, yeah, quickly they, now Drew gets the pass up the court and he gets the layup as yeah. Gilman extends their lead. As I was saying, yeah, if they can get their other players involved, I think they should have no problem hanging with this Gilman team. Definitely, Taylor. In addition, off that last play, Chase Drew is able to get the ball from some great defense by the Hounds. Mr. Bartz was telling me earlier today, he doesn't believe in trying to outscore a team. He believes solid defense is the key to winning games. And so far, they've been showing that as they've hold, held St. Paul's to only 12 points as we're about halfway through this second quarter. Yeah, I mean, defense has been incredible. I think they've forced about like probably seven turnovers so far, which is really impressive coming off their tough loss to Georgetown Prep. St. Paul's misses as Foster drives down quick and his pass to Lane will be tipped off. And St. Paul's will get it back. Yeah, interesting play by Ziggy Reed there. Um, I mean, he may be a little selfish, to be honest, because he had about a 15-foot jumper but he had a man wide open. Maybe he's just like putting, wants to put on his, his team on his back. But I think the key for St. Paul's is it can't be one player. It's got to be a team effort, which we haven't really seen so much that far. Definitely, as Chase Drew tries to steal it, but it will be tipped off of him. And St. Ball, Paul's pardon me, will get the ball from underneath the basket. Inbound now. Smolder almost loses it to Lane. And it looks like they're going to call Lane on a foul. As Smolder will go to the line. Oh, yeah, I guess that puts the uh, St. Paul's in the bonus. So they'll be shooting one and one here. As Lane checks out now for Matt Cooper. Mr. Barth giving him a high five over on the sideline as... He's been doing a great job tonight. Smaldor makes the first free throw. One for one. And misses the second. As Drew gets it, takes it up court with some steam, and he's going to be fouled. Yeah, great rebound there. It looked like number 15 for St. Paul's, um, Miles Moore was going to get that rebound, but he really, he got the ball tight rope down the sideline and able to draw the foul. Rucker looked like he wanted to take another deep three, but he will pass it out to Jordan Foster, who goes inside, takes the shot, and he nails the two-pointer. I like that play a lot from Jordan Foster. A lot of the times he's going inside and kicking out, but I like... His mid-range game has been solid from the time he started playing Gilman basketball. So I'm looking for him to take more of those kinds of shots. That's definitely an important attribute in basketball that I think has been underrated recently. Yeah, because really lately it's been like dunking and three-pointers. That's what, but it's, that doesn't show. Like it, it may show on highlights, but it doesn't. It won't show that often. I mean, it will show, but like mid-range game is also another key attribute, as you said. That's what gets the points on the board, Taylor. Yep. As Anthony Smaldor walks it down the court, who's been liking by on Gilman's team tonight, Taylor? Well, I think it's uh, – I'm not going to single out any, anybody in particular. I think it's been a group effort. I mean, they're all, they all seem to be playing well. Um, defense was solid. I mean, as I say that, St. Paul's makes a three. But I think it's really – they've been playing well as a team. Assists, rebounds, everything related to teamwork has been there for Gilman. Totally agree with you, Taylor. They've had some great ball movement as Jalen Rucker gets another deep three. 
Yeah, great pass there. I mean, dry, if you, when you drive inside, you're going to clear. You're going to force everybody to the middle. You're going to crash the middle. And then you're going to have probably usually a guy open behind you that is just lurking there from three-point range. Jalen Rucker is that man as he's hit two of those tonight. Looks like Smaldor was fouled again, and he will go to the line. He's been one for three tonight on his free throws as he misses another. St. Paul's really struggling from the line so far. They may be maybe 50%, maybe a little higher, but there's been struggles. It yeah, looks like they're only 45% now, Taylor. Yeah, wow, wow. Well, I mean, you got to be at least over 60 if you want to be succeeding from the line. That's off of 11 shots. And Gilman has been perfect, on the other hand, as they're 5 for 5 from the line. Jalen Rucker steals it back, goes inside, passes out to Matt Smith, or Matt Cooper, pardon me, and he's just off on the three point attempt. Great play by I mean, great play by Jalen Rucker there to force the jump ball. It looked like um, Ziggy Reed was going in there for an easy layup because nobody was really there. But I mean, really great play by holding on to that ball. That was an excellent attempt by Gilman. However, they almost took the ball right out of Ziggy's hands. Yeah. Leo Kelly in inbounds a small door. Tries to get away from Jordan Foster, and. St. Paul's will nearly get the ball back as it is tipped across the half-court line by Gilman. Matt Cooper, some tough defense right now, and he forces St. Paul's to pass it out of bounds as Gilman gets the ball back. Early in the game, it looked like St. Paul's was passing the ball well. You know, they weren't first in turnovers, but now as the second quarter has gone on, like, I mean, Gilman is forcing a lot of turnovers. I'm not sure if it's Gilman's defense, but St. Paul's carelessness. I mean, St. Paul's, if they want to have any shot at winning this game, they've got to Stop turning the ball over. They've got to be better in the turnover department, and they've got to get down low and score in the paint. As Gilman gets the ball into their side of the court, looks like Mr. Bartz, Coach Bartz, is trying to talk to Roman Hines a little, set up a play possibly. Right now St. Paul's tallest guy is uh, on the field is Troy Bartholomew. He's 6'8 listed, but Roman does look taller than him, just by seeing it, but I think Roman should have no tr no problem uh, getting a hook shot or getting down low against Troy Bartholomew. Definitely, Taylor. Roman only in his junior year, he's been impressive throughout his Gilman basketball career. He's from Jamaica. I mean, he's a... Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah. So I know. He's in my advisory. He's vi been visiting his family. Jalen Rucker there yeah. makes a, misses a deep three. Continue, Taylor, sorry. Yeah, well, I was just saying, like, he visits family. I mean, apparently his, his parents aren't very tall, so it's incredible that he has so much height. And Rucker misses another three as that will hit the rim and go over the backboard. As St. Paul's inbounds it to Anthony Smaldor. Brings it across the midcourt mid line. Deed up by Jalen Rucker. And it looks like Matt Smith is going to be called on a foul. They're not quite sure what that was. Along with his great three-point game, Matt Smith plays fearless and aggressive defense. You know, since he's not on the taller end um, in the MIAA, he's he has to do that. And he's he do, usually does a really good job, you know, forcing or double teaming or forcing, like, forcing shots and turnovers. Definitely. Smith is a great athlete. He's also one of the key parts of the Gilman volleyball program. He won the championship this year as the Hounds took their third straight home against the Loyal Dons. St. Paul's, I think that's, or that's probably their second uh, two free throws in a row. I mean, that's one category that we've talked about so far this game as the second quarter winds down. They've really struggled in. 
Drew gets it inside as he gets two points. As he is 50% in his field goal shooting, three for six. Hard press defense by Gilman as Anthony Smaldor passes over to Austin Measle who misses the three point. Jordan Foster brings it up quickly now. Inside, passes out to Smith who gives it to Drew and looks like Gilman's gonna take their time here, try to get a buzzer beater so St. Paul's will not have any time left. Smith in the corner and he is just short as St. Paul's will not be able to get a shot off before the half. Great, great half of basketball for the Greyhounds. I mean, Coach Bartz uh, is succeeding on what he talked about. Like, he, he wants to have better defense, which they've had, only giving up 20 points in the first 16 minutes of the game. That is a, that is a great thing, and I think that can lead to some confidence for Gilman in the second half. Definitely, Taylor. Gilman's been playing great defense. St. Paul's, however, they've looked a little sloppy in the later parts of this yes. first half. What do you think they need to do coming out in the second half in order to try to bring this game a little closer? Well, I think they've, got, they've really got to focus on not turning the ball over, as you said, because turnovers are one of the things that will just kill you. And, you know, you can't come back from turnovers. You know, they'll put teams in great positions, and I think that's what they've done this game. Turnovers have really hurt them. If I were St. Paul's, I'd calm down. You know, you don't have to always force that long pass. So that, that would be my advice. Definitely. Well, we will be back in a few minutes on Greyhound TV as Gilman School is up 31-20 to 20 against the St. Paul's Crusaders. Back in a few.
Yeah, this is a change that Coach Stoops were using it to get back to our world. It's all good. Don't worry about it. No problem. Thank you. All right, you want to get back now? Hello and be welcome back to Gilman School, Gilman Varsity Basketball against the St. Paul's Crusaders. Gilman's up 31-20, to entering this second half. Gilman's had some great defensive work tonight. Uh, and they've only held St. Paul's to 20 points, as I mentioned, as opposed to the 76 they allowed against Georgetown Prep. Taylor, what do you think Gilman needs to do, or keep doing, and able to secure this win? Good defense. I mean, they played great defense in the first half. If they can just keep... If they can keep doing this, uh, doing the, their defense like they did in the first half, I mean, they should have no problem winning this game. Definitely. As Malik Missouri passes inside to Hines, back out to Missouri, he goes in, takes the two pointer, and he misses it, hits the rim. Ziggy Reed tries to take it down as he's fouled by Jordan Foster. Yeah, I'm looking to get um, is to see if Gilman gets Malik Missouri more involved. He wasn't involved that much in the first half. I'm not sure how many points he had, but I, I'd like to see Malik Missouri, the sophomore forward, get more involved. Definitely, Taylor. We've seen some great efforts by a plethora of Greyhounds tonight. We've seen, uh, who was it, Chase Drew. He's had a couple baskets. We've seen Roman Hines get inside, get some rebounds, uh, and Jalen Rucker step up to make some deep threes. As Anthony Smaldor, the sophomore, 5'7", will get another free throw. And he makes them both. Jalen Rucker, long pass to Chase Drew as he tries to go inside. And his pass to Foster will go out as St. Paul's gets the ball back. Looks like St. Paul's bench has had a revitalization. Now they're on their feet after that turnover. Um, We'll see if Gilman can quiet them down, though. I mean, if Gilman can just get some momentum going like they had in the first half, they should have no problem with that. Definitely, Taylor. And it looks like one of the one of the teams called timeout. And we'll be back in a moment on Greyhound TV. Back now in the Gilman Arena. St. Paul's will have the ball as they try to inbound it. Right next to Gilman's bench. Looks like Leo Kelly tries to get a cross-court pass. And he gets it to Miles Moore, but then he is immediately fouled. And so St. Paul's will inbound it now. Chase Drew playing defense against Leo Kelly as he gets a great pass to Troy Bartholomew who shortens the lead by Gilman to seven points now. Yeah, great pass under the rim there. I'm not sure what Gilman was doing. They let him get under the rim on an inbound pass from the baseline. So we'll see if they can continue as Malik Missouri misses that shot. Barth pardon me, Smaldor gets the rebound. He'll take it across the half court line. Jumbles around trying to Look for the smart pass here. Deed up by Rucker and Drew, who steals the ball, takes it down, and he is going to be fouled and sent to the line. Should be probably just an inbound pass here because oh, no. I don't think he was quite in the shooting for motion yet. Um, 
But good steal there by Chase Drew. Definitely. Cooper long inbound pass. Jordan Foster able to handle it though as he goes inside, passes to Missouri. But he is not able to handle it and St. Paul's gets it back as they miss their layup as well. Jalen Rucker stops the ball, gives it to Chase Drew, and he nails the three. Great play by Chase Drew. Jordan, uh, sorry about that. Uh, Jalen Rucker with the head fake, the shot fake there, pass out to Chase Drew for the easy three. St. Paul's working it around as Missouri plays some hard defense on Bartholomew, and he blocks the three-point attempt wow. by great, Miles Moore. Great play. I'm not... Miles Moore probably shouldn't have taken that with six, uh, I'm not sure what his height is, six five probably. Malik Missouri coming right at him. Rucker down the court and he gets the layup. Great job by Rucker, swerving, doing all that he needs right in transition to get the layup. St. Paul's looked a little desperate there as Smalder gave a long pass down the court to Leo Kelly who is fouled on his attempt to get the layup. Kelly at the line, and he misses his first one. Good one's going with a less height look here with Chase Drew being their tallest guy on the court right now. Probably we're going to see a lot of three-point shots here in the next couple minutes. And Kelly makes the second one as Drew gives an inbound toss to Jalen Rucker. Bring it across half, half court as Miles Moore plays defense. Over to Drew up top. He takes the three. And he is just short as that hits the rim. But Matthew Cooper able to get it back. Great play by Cooper as he gets it to Rucker who is fouled. Wow. Great hustle there by the whole team there. I mean, Matt Cooper with the great. He tried to slam the ball on one of the St. Paul's. Hopefully hit a shoe. But it ended up going right in the hands of Jalen Rucker and he being aggressive as can be, going to the rim and taking the foul. Rucker makes his first. Gilman still appears is 100% from the line tonight. Six for very six. impressive, very impressive. Still perfect as Rucker nails them both. And it looks like a timeout is going to be called now. From Gilman, I believe. Looks like St. Paul's was trying to come back, Taylor, for a minute. As yeah, I mean, they, they, had a, yeah. they had some momentum at the beginning of the half. I think they scored six unanswered, five unanswered. But Gilman has certainly turned the, um, the points against them here as Gilman is on a little streak of their own. Exactly, Taylor. They had down to a seven-point lead a few minutes ago, but now back up to 13 points as it is 38 to 25 in favor of Gilman. As both teams break from the huddle and come back onto the court, who do you, who you see on St. Paul's bench or team, pardon me, that's been looking uh, like a great impact for them so far tonight? Well, I've been talking about it all night. I mean, Ziggy Freed, whenever he's on the court, he's the largest presence for St. Paul's. Um, you know, the other players haven't been able to get involved that much, which has surprised me to a certain extent, but I could see from the beginning that Ziggy Freed would be all involved as he goes to the rim and barely misses that layup. Matthew Cooper gets the rebound, passes to Rucker, who tries to go inside. Passes out to Foster. Over the shoulder pass to Rucker, who nails the three. See the chemistry between those two. Jalen Rucker was looking at Jordan Foster the whole, oh, as another And Foster steal. steals it. Wow, great play by Jordan Foster. Quick, maybe six points for Gilman there. That's very impressive. 
as the momentum is totally in favor of Gilman right now. Yeah, Taylor, incredible job by Foster there. He's able to, first of all, get the steal, which is impressive enough, and then he was able to get the point and be fouled in the process. Yeah. Matt Cooper comes off the court to get to bring back the freshman Christian Winborn, who we saw, I think, had two points in the first half. I look to see Gilman to get him more involved as they have grown the lead to 19 to grow his experience in the arena. As we were talking, Jalen Rucker made another free throw as Gilman remains perfect, eight for eight from the line. And St. Paul's tacks on two points themselves. Nice floater by Amir Thomas there. I think those are his first points tonight. Um, he's been kind of off tonight. I mean, he's been one of those guys that we've expected to see score more points, but has not quite done that. Yeah, Amir Thomas is looking really big early in this game, and then lately he's been seeming a little, a little off, but mm -hmm. he just scored some points there to remind us that he's still in this game. Rucker escapes and passes it to Drew, who gives it to Foster. Lane is able to save it from going across the midcourt line. Foster inside, nearly loses it, but keeps the ball, takes it out, passes up to Lane. Rucker inside, gives it to Wimborne, gives it to Drew. Great ball movement now as Wimborne takes the three wow. and he gets it. What a great, great ball movement there by Winborn and Chase Drew to eventually set up the three that was contested, but uh, I wasn't sure because it was kind of a step back. He was leaning one way, but <laughs> an amazing shot by Winborn there. As Interesting call there. Not sure about that one, but we're moving on. Leo Kelly will inbound the ball now for St. Paul's. Looks to the corner to Ziggy Reed as he takes the three and is short as it hits the side of the glass. Foster takes it in, passes out to Winborn, but the whistle blows. And it looks like Gilman's gonna get the ball to inbound underneath the basket. Gilman with a solid 20 point lead right now, 47 to 27, with 3.44 left in this third quarter. It looks like one of the things you talked about in Coach Barth's interview the other day um, was he, he really tends to stress defense a lot more than offense, and we've really seen that game. A great coaching job by Coach Barth tonight as the Gilman defense has been on fire, of course, as they let up a layup down low. <laughs> Seems like every time we talk about maybe, Gilman's maybe defense, a little bit. St. Paul scores. <laughs> and then Rayon answers back. I mean, it's been easy for them to score all night. They've been doing a great job of that. Almost at the 50-point mark. But, yeah, as you were mentioning, Taylor, Gilman's defense has really led the way for them tonight as they've only let up 29 as we approach the latter parts of this third quarter. Matt Smith, Matt Cooper, pardon me, will come in for Rayon Lane. And we will see Anthony Smaldor. And Ziggy Reed come down low as they've been very impactful tonight for the Crusaders. Deep three from St. Paul's. They will miss it. Get the rebound. And Winborn is able to get the steal as Foster goes one on one and is able to get the field goal. I mean, great play. The full court. I mean, Winborn, great pass to Jordan Foster. Up, easy transition, and one. Great shot there. Jordan Foster has been incredibly impactful tonight. As he's already had eight points as he gets his ninth. And that's Gilman's first free throw miss on the night. That's Foster 
loses it. Hard defense by the Greyhounds, and it looks like that'll cost them as St. Paul's will go to the line. St. Paul's already in the bonus here um, with seven, seven fouls, so they're going to be in it for the rest of the half. It's got to be a little concerning for Gilman, although still having a 21-point lead, as every foul now will at least be a one-and-one one for St. Paul's. Anthony Smaldor makes another free throw there. as he's shooting about 67% from the line. And that's another for him. He's now five for seven from the line tonight. Been there quite frequently. Pass by Winborn to Matthew Cooper is tipped by St. Paul's. But Gilman will get the ball back. Winborn dribbling up. Looks like he wanted to go inside. Passes out to Wilson. Over to Cooper. In the corner to Winborn. He goes inside. Passes out. Tipped by Smaldor. As Smith gets it to Missouri. Wilson inside. Smith for the three. And he is just off. Matt Smith has not played like himself tonight. I don't think he's hit a three yet. Usually a three-point specialist, but I'm sure we'll see him come back later in the season or maybe later in this game. Speaking of three points, that's a three-point there for Troy Bartholomew as he shortens this Gilman lead to 16 points. Gilman up 50-34 to 34 against St. Paul's with 148 left in this third quarter. We'll be back in a moment on Greyhound TV. Welcome back to Gilman School. Gilman up with a 16-point lead against St. Paul's as Gilman works it around. Winborn inside, takes the shot, and he makes it. Great jump shot there, really formed by himself. Pretty contested. You know, there are, Coach Bartz is definitely looking to get Brandon Winborn involved later in this game. Christian Winborn with seven points so far tonight. That's his third foul in the game, so he's getting in some foul trouble. I'm not sure Bartz, Coach Bartz is worried about it, though. He has a lot of depth. He's trying to get some players in as Gilman has an 18-point lead at the back half of the third quarter. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Coach Bartz really is impressed by this Gilman depth this year. They have so many talented players. He said they've had their hardest thing this year so far has been choosing who to play. Yeah. Small door at the line once more. Makes it. And he goes to 78% through free throws right now. Missouri up top. Shoots to the two. And he's just off as Leo Kelly gets it. And passes up to Smaldor, who takes it down the court. Gives it to Kelly, who is inside to Bartholomew. And he narrowly misses the shot. But St. Paul's will keep possession now as Leo Kelly is set to inbound it. To Bartholomew, who does a setter move 
and just taps it right into the basket as St. Paul's uh, narrows the margin down to 14 points. Over to Matt Smith in the corner who passes it to Rucker. Inside to Wilson who is fouled on his layup attempt. And it looks like he'll go to the line. Misses the first one as it hits the back of the rim. A lot more good going students here than I'd expect to see on a Friday night. Of course, the JV hockey team um, suffered a 8-2 to two loss earlier today. Um, I know that has been a big pride of a lot of seniors. Um, you know, we wish you the best, JV hockey. You know, um, we, it seems like JV hockey has gotten more of a presence than varsity hockey this year. It's seems kind of unbelievable. <laughs> They were saying tonight might be their best chance to win a game all year. Mm -hmm. But it uh, doesn't sound like they were that close. As the next foul say, uh, Kelman commits, St. Paul's will be in the double bonus, which could end up hurting them as you get every foul, you get two free throws, no one and one as this is the last one and one St. Paul's is going to get here. Smaldor misses another one as he's been at the line all night tonight. And is 70, pardon me, 80%. Our statistics, thanks again to Ryan Joyce, who's been keeping us up to date. Matt Cooper gets the rebound, and Jalen Rucker walks it up the court. Seven seconds on the shot on the game clock as he tries to get the buzzer beater, shoots it. And is just off Whoa. as Gilman almost Man. able to tip it in as it that was close. just rolls around the rim. Anyway, at the end of the third quarter, Gilman is leading by 15 points, 53 to 38 yep. over the St. Paul's Crusaders. We'll be right back on Greyhound TV. Welcome back to Gilman School. Gilman up by 15 over the Crusaders as they inbound it and Smaldor comes in. Chase Drew able to steal it. He goes up the court and just misses the layup, but he gets it back and gets the putback. Chase Drew's had like a bunch of steals tonight. I don't know how many that is, but he's been all over the court get, receiving passes from St. Paul's. And St. Paul's is not able to execute on their fast break attempt. That is uh, Gilman's 10th foul, so St. Paul's will be shooting two every free throw for the rest of this game. Miles Moore is at the line ready to shoot as the referees are talking to Phil Pond, the St. Paul's head coach. Oh. 
and Miles misses it. And that one as well is missed, so he'll be 0 for 2 from the line. Rucker cross court. And Foster just misses the three point attempt as Bartholomew gets the rebound and gives it to Smaldor, who looks to take it up the court. As they need to move quickly if they want to have any chance of diminishing this Gilman 17 point now advantage. Bartholomew inside. And he looks like he's fouled by Gilman. I'm not sure what number that is for Chase Drew, but I think he, I think he's getting up. No, just number two. Well, I know that Gilman itself is in some foul trouble. But sending number 12 to the line, I think, I'm not sure if he shot any free throws. But he's a big man, so he shouldn't be too good from the line. But we'll see. And he's to the right of the basket as Rayon Lane comes in now for Kai Wilson. And he's 0 for 2 as St. Paul's has missed uh, all of their last four free throw attempts. <clears throat> Pardon me. Rucker up top, passing it around to Drew. Drew to Cooper inside, shoots the two pointer, and Rayon Lane tries for the put back. Oh, wow. But they're not able to get it as the refs are going to whistle it and give it to St. Paul's. A lot of fouls against Gilman in the second half. Um, I know I've been talking, stressing it a lot, but St. Paul's on, on those like kind of small fouls, they do get to go to the line and have a chance for an easy two points. Definitely, Taylor. At some point, despite St. Paul's missing – all of their last four. At some point, this is going to hurt Gilman. Yeah, I mean, you have to, th well, I mean, you had to think that, but St. Paul seems to be just missing every free throw they're taking right now. They've, I think they've missed their last five, so, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if they can come back. And, you know, they'd be in the game right now. They'd be uh, much more in the game than they are if they were just, if they were just making these free throws, you know, I think they've missed pro they missed 13. 13. So that would be if they had just made all those, it would be a three-point game, or it's a one-possession game. So, I Gil mean, that's got to be tough for St. Paul, shooting under 50% from the line. Definitely. Gillen, on the other hand, 83%, 10 for 12 from the line. Now that's Cooper. Huh. And one. Great, play. Great shot there, driving down the baseline, quick layup under the basket, really nice. He's definitely been an impactful player tonight. Yes. As he's only a sophomore, so he'll be a great player to have for Gilman going forward in these next few years. Tough miss there, but um, we'll see if Gilman can make a stop coming up on this defensive drive. Smalder almost loses it as Drew and Rucker double team. Smalder inside. Looks like they're going to call travel on small door as Gilman will get the ball after a turnover. Rucker walks it up, gives it to Lane now. Gilman in no rush. As Lane passes over to Foster, Rucker for the two-pointer. And he was just off. Chase Drew and Lane double team Ziggy, but he's able to get it out to Amir Thomas, who puts it down court to Leo Kelly. And the three point attempt by Bartholomew is just missed as Lane rips it out of the hands of Leo Kelly. What we haven't mentioned tonight is Gilman has been all over the offensive boards. I mean, I, th I think they're out rebounding St. Paul's by a significant amount, not just by on the defensive side, but on the offensive side. It seems like Jalen Rucker is always sprinting in from the three-point line to get a clutch rebound and put it back. Definitely. He's a great player to have right now for Gilman. He's been doing everything for them.
both teams in a timeout. Taylor, if you're Coach Bartz, what are you saying to Gilman to you know, try to inspire him to put this game really away? Well, I mean, if it's not all away already, I mean, they have an 18-point lead with 537 left. What I would do right now is I'd put in guys, Matt Cooper, Malik, Missouri, um, you know, some of the younger guys or guys that haven't played as much, like Jack Tortolani, um, of course, put the freshman back in, Christian Wimborne. But I think really to stress the future right now, as you have a game in this season, you know, once they get to the A Conference matchups, it's going to be tough for them because a lot of these games are going to be close, so those guys aren't going to get the experience for future years. But that's what I'd just be – I, that would be my mindset if I were Coach Barnes, Coach Barnes right now. Absolutely. As Jordan Foster misses his first three-point attempt, free throw attempt, pardon me, and Rucker goes up to talk to him, likely to drop a play. Shooting the second now, and Foster is perfect on that one. Small to bringing up the court. Deed up by Foster. She gives it over to Ziggy Reed. Gillen playing some hard press defense right now. Lane and Foster double teaming. And Bartholomew's yeah. inside, but he'll be fouled. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that was a pretty easy call for the refs there. Going up inside. Although Chase Drew probably saving a layup and causing number 12 um, to go to the line. I think he's been 3 of 7 on the night from the line. Yeah, I would definitely rather. Have St. Paul's shooting from the line, then shooting a layup. Make it three of eight now. I mean, this this has been just atrocious for the Crusaders. Their free throw sh shooting has been so off all game. I mean, it's hard to believe, but they are shooting. Let me see what this is. Uh, now 52%. Oh, yeah, it is 52%. My bad. I may have uh, missed something earlier, but that that's that that's not good enough for the Crusaders. Yeah, if you really think about it, they missed 14 free throw attempts. And if they had made all of those, they would have only four been point four game. points away. Yeah. Smolder takes the three, but he is off as Chase Drew gets the ball. Taking it up the middle over to Foster, who passes to S Cooper in the corner. Rucker goes inside over to Cooper, who oh, almost wow. in and out for three. But Rucker able to get it back. And he will take it out as he misses his layup but is able to rebound. Oh, oh wow. my God. Wow. What a great play. Jordan Foster all the way up from the three-point line. I mean, that is, a, that is a play to remember. He is not messing around on that play. Absolutely not. I was just about to say, Jalen Rucker has been all over the court with that steal offensive rebound. But that was probably the play of the night there by Jordan Foster. Definitely, I mean, Taylor. The amount of height he has to get to get up to the rim. I mean, he's not he's not the tall he's not on the taller side of the team. Um, no, but he's he looks like two. he looks like that, he just jumped over St. Paul's entire team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was awesome by Jordan Foster right there. Jordan Foster having a very impactful night for Gilman as he has added 11 points. To Gilman's 60 points now total. Four minutes and 15 seconds left in this fourth quarter action as it's been slowed down a little bit by St. Paul's' constant free throw shooting. God, they, this has just been terrible for St. Paul's. I think that puts them at 50%, 15 for 30. I mean, it's, it's got to be better. It's got to be better. Danny Rosenfeld is now the sophomore, first-year varsity player. Or, pardon me, junior, first-year varsity player. There's a charge is called there. I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Didn't really look like anybody was charging anybody. But whatever. I mean, 18-point lead, four minutes left. Gilman can't complain much as they basically have this game locked up. Gilman looks like they're still applying the pressure very much so right now. Not wanting to give St. Paul's an inch for hope.
And St. Paul's tacks on two more as the lead is down to 16. Rucker passes over to Jordan Foster. Back up to Rucker at the top of the court. Playing against Anthony Smaldor as Missouri sets a pick. Rucker still with it. Over to Matt Smith. Goes inside and wow. gets the layup. Great play by Matt Smith. I mean, he can sometimes do that. He's a three-point specialist, but he can go down low, as we see there, going up and in, going through the whole St. Paul's defense. Leo Kelly inside to Bartholomew, who gets the two-pointer. One thing that Gillen's really struggled on this game is shooting the three. As I mentioned earlier, they've got to do better from the three if they want to succeed later in the season. They've shot 22% from three-point range. Um, really, I think that really lies. Malik Missouri was a three, was a three machine last year, but as Jordan Foster rattles off another three, but I think getting him more in the game is huge for Coach Bartz and Gelman. Bartholomew gets another two pointer, as it looks like St. Paul's will call timeout. Gilman with a 62-47 lead right now with. 2.30 left in this game. And we'll be right back on Greyhound TV. Welcome back to Gilman School. Gilman with a 16-point oh. lead. Oh, my God. That is something that we will never see again. I don't think so, but Zach Franks with a three. I mean, it's so rare that you'll see that. I mean, this is just getting to the point of just fun for the Greyhounds. As St. Paul tries to answer with a three for their own, but Bartholomew will be off. Franks still smiling as he comes up the court. Missouri over to Frank as he looked like he wanted to take another three-point attempt. Rosenfeld passes inside, but it is stolen by St. Paul's. Up to Leo Kelly. And Bartholomew gets another. As he's had a hot streak in the past few possessions for St. Paul's. Yeah, he's been, he's been solid in the paint but not so much at the free throw line and outside the three-point arc. But he has been very solid in the paint so far. He's been the point leader for St. Paul so far tonight, getting 13 of St. Paul's 48. We initially thought Ziggy Reed would be the point leader. However, he's only at 10 right now. He's not really been you know, that effective in the second half as we've seen. But he's actually on the sideline, it appears, right now. I think one of the biggest surprises all night is Malik Missouri has zero points in this, with one minute left. I mean, I was thinking going into this game, Malik Missouri is a top M Missouri is a top three player on this team. I, I I'd expect him to not only be involved more but be contributing more in this game. I suppose he is one of the best players on Gilman's team, but I but I think every player has their off night. Yes, definitely. But Malik, Malik Missouri towards the later half of the season last year and Silent Night, he was deadly from three-point range, also having a huge poster, poster eyes on, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, on this one guy on BL that made the atmosphere electric in this uh, arena. 
Absolutely electric, Taylor. <laughs> Daniel Rodenfeld inbounds it to Matt Smith, who brings it up middle of the court. St. Paul's trying to get some of their bench players in right now as we see Grant Greenstein, Dmitry Shostov, and several others in for the first time tonight. So it looks like the ball will go to St. Paul. Well, I, on the scoreboard it says St. Paul's. I'm not sure what it's... Maybe it's at Gilman. Yeah, it looks like it's at Gilman now. And Brooks will blow in. Danny Rosenfeld for the three, who is just short. And Philip Stokes gets the ball, but there's a foul called. And St. Paul's will get it as... Grant Greenstein looks to inbound it to Stokes. I just Xavier got, Bell over now. Pardon me, Taylor. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Um, I just got to give full credit to Coach Bartz and the Greyhounds after this game, coming off a really tough loss to Georgetown Prep. Defense playing remarkably well as it looks this game, but I mean, the one thing that they do have to work on is their three-point shooting. Everything else really does look solid for this team, and hopefully they can make a postseason run in the MIA conference. Absolutely, Taylor. They've had a solid defensive performance so far, which is really probably going to be the cornerstone of this team moving forward. But as you mentioned, they do need to work on their three-point shooting, as they've only had a handful tonight, six for 26, shooting at 23% behind the arc. St. Paul's still struggling for that line, still at that 50% mark that they really have all game been, been and not been able to get by it as they dip below that now as, as that one is missed. Zach Franks give it, gives it to Matt Smith as he's up in the top corner of the court guarded by Stokes. He gives it over to Danny Rosenfeld now as he looks like he will dribble out this game against St. Paul's. As the buzzer sounds now, Gilman has a commanding win over the St. Paul's Crusaders, 65-51 with a solid performance by Jordan Foster, Jalen Rucker, and the rest of the Greyhound crew. Really a team effort from the Hounds tonight. Everybody contributing. <laughs> Zach, Zach Dis Dixon with that three at the end. I think he had five points all together, but he really had a solid game, and really everybody. Um, no great team effort. I'm sure Coach Bartz is very happy with the way the Hounds played earlier in, early in the season. Definitely. So tomorrow night we have the Gilman Greyhounds going up West Nottingham for the Bristow Championship game, which will be here on Greyhound TV as well at about 6 o'clock, I believe. That, that, that's surely going to be a tougher match for the Hounds as West Nottingham, I think, beat um, Concordia Prep by, I think, 60 points earlier today. Building, that was incredible. Building a 22 to nothing lead early in the game. But we'll see tomorrow. We'll see. How, I think it's John is on call with Teddy Conover. Um, that's, that should be an interesting yeah. <laughs> uh, combo. So, uh, John, you want to um, – any – any last words for you? Yeah, well, Gilman really great job tonight. They need to clean up their three points a little bit. But other than that, a 